Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'd just like to begin by welcoming you all to this um, our virtual Advent service on the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, that uh, Sunday of great joy. And so, as always, we'll begin with a prayer. Lord God, as we prepare for Christmas, may we not fail to prepare ourselves for this great festival. Help us amongst all the busyness of these days to find time to think of what Christmas really means, of your love for the world, of the coming of the promised Redeemer, of the mystery of the Word made flesh. And like Mary, may we treasure up these things and ponder them in our hearts, so that we may be ready to join in the joyful worship of Christmas to the glory of your name. Amen. And so now we'll listen to our scripture readings. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, Are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am, as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness. Make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees. And they put this further question to him. Why are you baptising if you are not the Christ, and not Elijah, and not the prophet? John replied, I baptise with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, 
on the far side of the Jordan where John was baptising. The Gospel of the Lord. So what is a witness? A few years ago, I was involved in a car accident. Totally not my fault, but um, I was driving down the road and another car crashed into the side of my car, spinning my car around. I must admit I was in total shock and I pulled off the road as did the other driver. I got out of the car to check the damage and see if anyone, everyone was okay. Now the other driver got out of the car all angry and attempted to blame me for the accident. Luckily, another car pulled over and the driver got out and came over and said, I'm a witness, I saw everything and gave me his details to pass on to the insurance company. He was kind of like, uh, kind of like an angel who just appeared out of nowhere. But what is a witness? A witness is someone who sees or experiences something and can then speak about what they've seen or experienced. John the Baptist was a prime example of a witness. He bore witness to Jesus. He was the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. You know, John the Baptist was a popular fellow. Crowds were flocking to him. He could have taken advantage of his celebrity and made his ministry all about himself, use it to make himself comfortable and respected. But he didn't. He looked beyond himself. He directed all his followers towards Jesus. He must become greater and I must become less them great scripture words which I'm sure we all know so well. 
So John the Baptist is a great example for us all today. We as Christians should all be witnesses for Christ in our own lives. Jesus should become greater and we should become less. You know, when John saw Jesus, he said, behold the Lamb of God, behold him. You know, he pointed everyone towards Jesus, even his own followers. And that begs the question, do we do the same? Do we direct people towards Jesus? Is the Lord so vibrant in our lives that we can't help but talk about him? Where is God on the list of our priorities? You know, for myself as a priest, where is God on my list of priorities? Is he up there at the top as he should be? Or is he relegated to somewhere between preparing lunch and writing the next homily? Am I a witness to Jesus? Am I a witness to the good news? I know that I should be, but um, I also know that most of the time I fall well short. So we're now preparing for that joyous time of Christmas. The TV is making the most of this lockdown Christmas, telling us all to buy more food, treat yourself. You know, it's been a tough year, so why not? The radios are full of uh, the Christmas songs. You know, the Pogues and Wizard are making their yearly appearance on the airwaves. But where is Jesus? Where's Jesus? What mention is there of the birth of the Messiah, the Saviour? It seems in the world today we celebrate Christmas but are happy to forget about Christ. It's like having the birthday party, just forgetting about the one whose birthday it is. Now more than ever we need to be witnesses, we need to be the ones who speak up and proclaim Emmanuel, God with us. We need to be the ones directing others to the reason, to Jesus. Because without him, what's the point in Christmas? You know, when the Lord is at the centre of our celebrations, the baby Jesus in the crib, it makes sense of everything else. And then, and only then, we can truly enjoy all that Christmas is. Amen. So now let's have our intercessions from the school children. We pray for the church during this time of Advent, that she may be a sign of God's light and goodness in our world, and a beacon of hope for the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all people over the world, preparing for Christmas during these uncertain times. May they be touched by God's love and open their hearts to the true meaning of Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world leaders that they may be guided by your love in all the difficult decisions that we have to make over the coming weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our community. May the love of Christ be shown in what we do, how we think, in our actions and in our words. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have devoted their lives to sharing God's love and who are no longer with us. May they now live forever in God's glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let, let us turn to our mother Mary, who said yes to you and asks she, that she prays for us as we say, Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
So let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way of salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So I'd just like to thank you for joining us again for this, our third Advent uh, service. Thanks to the children and to the musicians and to our readers as well, for who all make this, this possible. Next week for our final service, Father Andrew will be um, taking the reins. So for myself, I'd just like to say thank you for joining us in these first three weeks. And I look forward to seeing you, God willing, in person over the Christmas period. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Amen. Walk in your